Hi, I'm QDC. We're about to build today our two models. Today we're going to build a kit called Minimum Factory NEN, and also we're going to build a, uh, a diorama base for Memorial Models called Figure Base Number One. And the reason why I'm building these two particular kits is because I'm, I'm making a diorama that I'm calling the Sexy Girl Diorama. And I, the reason why I'm building this particular diorama set is because I just wanted to build a, a cute girl. I was searching all over the internet trying to find a suitable um, figure of a girl for me to actually um, build and paint. And I settled for this particular one right here because it, it had a military, uh, a military theme to it. Now, I don't really know the true origins of this particular kit. I do know that it is uh, Japanese anime, and I do know that it's, um, I think it's loosely based on a TV series, uh, TV anime cartoon series in Japan called Girls Unpenza. And that particular TV um, cartoon series is talks about, as best as I can understand it, uh, teenage girls um, learning and working with World War II tanks and they're fighting each other and doing a whole bunch of um, things in this cartoon series, which I really don't fully understand. But let me show you some pictures of that cartoon series so you get a better idea of this particular kit. Take a look. Okay, so let's start building these two kits right now and make the diorama. Let's go take a look inside this box. We have the instruction sheet. A bag containing the base, hair, legs, arms, and a head. Another bag containing the hat, torso, legs. Not sure what that is. Parts of the skirt and the binoculars. And the decal. Before we start assembling the figure, I want to talk to you more about the instruction sheet. The instruction sheet for this figure is very straightforward and easy to follow. In this instruction sheet, you have basically one page that's numbered uh, for the figure from 1 to 25. And you start by uh, assembling the hat, the face, and it goes all the way down to the legs. And the last one would be the um, this part right here. And so it's straightforward to build. Now on the next page of this instruction sheet, you get to see the completed figure done by a professional artist. And he or she has really done a really nice job on this figure. It does look very sexy and it does look very nice. Now, I want to focus your attention on to the style of this figure. This figure was not supposed to look realistic and it's supposed to look more cartoonish. So if you notice the eyes of this woman's face, they're very, very big and does have more of a doll-like appearance. And that's because this particular figure is known as anime. It's a type of this, uh, cartoon design in Japan and it's very popular in that country. And so this figure actually reflects the anime uh, style of figure um, figures. So mine will be like that as well. Now, you notice that the uniform that this girl is wearing looks very style, stylistic. Now, for mine, I'm going to make mine look more like a more realistic German military uniform in which 
the entire uniform would be all black. Here's a picture of a real uh, German uniform worn during World War II, and I'm going to make mine look more like that. Take a look. So now I'm going to start assembling the figure. Here is the figure almost all completed. I decided not to finish the entire figure and then paint it. I decided to paint the figure in parts and then assemble it uh, as a final stage of this project. And the reason why is because this figure is so large that it's more, um, more easier for me to actually paint the figure uh, in sections versus painting it as a whole. So the next step for me is to go to use my airbrush. It's time for me to paint the figure. I'm going to paint the clothes first and I'm going to paint the clothes not with the black color because even though the figure has as a black uh, wearing a black jacket and a black skirt. When I paint the shadows, the thing, the problem is, is that the shadows for black clothes is black. And so you can't paint sh black shadows on a black clothes because the colors are all the same. So in order for me to remedy that problem, I need to paint the clothes with a dark gray instead. So that way I can actually uh, use black color to paint the shadows. Alright, so we just painted parts of the figure by using the airbrush and now I want to paint the shadows and highlights on the clothing and also on the face as well. What you're about to see is a summary of how I did that. Okay, so let's talk about painting, uh, painting a figure. In my opinion, uh, painting a figure is all about lighting, how light shines on an object and how you create that artificially onto your figure. So what you look at right now is a typical black skirt and this particular skirt has many pleats and inside, deep inside each pleat, you see that it's total darkness. Now even though this is a black skirt, it's not entirely black. It's actually very dark gray. And what is black is actually the shadow colors that you see in between each pleat. Now, as you leave the pleat inside the deep pleat where the shadows, you notice that the um, that it gets a little bit lighter and lighter in terms of its darkness, and that's indicated by this light right here. The arrows that's pointing to your right are the dark shadows, and the arrows pointing to your left are the light shadows. And to make the highlights. I want to focus your attention onto this slide. Now, this is a typical um, leather jacket that anyone would wear. Not me, but <laughs> anyway. So, to the, um, you see there's two arrows. The right is 
the right arrow is the highlight and you notice that it's actually gray and the left arrow that's pointing to your left is the uh, high uh, bright highlights in which you see it's almost becoming a bright uh, a bright white and that's how light sh uh, shines onto clothing and creates shadows and highlights so how do i put that onto the figure well i like to use oil paints to do that i like to use oil paints from witten and what i do is first i just use plain black for dark shadows and then i add a little bit of white to make the lighter shadows and then i put that onto the figure as you can see on this particular slide the arrows that's pointing to your right are dark shadows and the arrows that are pointing to your left are the light shadows so i did that all over the entire figure and now on this particular slide we're going to make uh, highlights so again i'm using the same oil colors but i'm adding more white to the black to make the uh, highlight which is this gray and then the, um, the bright highlight which is a lighter gray and i put that onto the figure and again the right arrows that's pointing to right are the highlights and the arrows that's pointing to left are the bright highlights and the overall appearance looks okay to me let's talk about painting a face painting a face is at least in my personal experience the most complicated part of painting a figure what you're looking at right now is a painting from a very uh, famous French uh, painter his name was William Bouguereau and this painting is called Gabriel and this is a very nice painting of this young lady and in this next slide you're going to see three arrows pointing to your right and those arrows uh, are pointing at the shadows and dark shadows like painting the clothing the face does have shadows and dark shadows and also in this next slide the arrows that are pointing to your left those are the highlights and bright highlights and i'm going to put those basic elements onto my figure so here is a picture of the face of my figure before painting and i'm going to use two um paint uh, oils actually three um i didn't take the picture of the of the third of the third oil which is uh, basically flesh tint valkyrie brown and also white again it's not there sorry about that so in this slide you see that i painted everything the shadows the highlights and in this, in, in this slide you see that i applied the eyes which is actually a decal now you notice that this face looks very shiny now and also you notice that there's a slightly darker tint to this particular face and the reason why there's a darker tint is a technique that artists use it's called glazing glazing is basically a way to mimic um, a, a better skin tone by darkening the overall appearance and the, and how you do it is that you use a flesh the flesh color that i showed you previously and dilute it in linseed oil and you apply it over the face and also i i did the same technique onto her uh her skirt and her jacket as well because i wanted to have more of a dark or darker appearance so it works out pretty well okay so all the parts have been painted and right now they're drying so the next part of my project is to build the diorama base it's time for me to build the diorama base what you're looking at is a product from a company called royal model and it's called figure base number one 
And this particular diorama kit is made out of plaster. One of the problems with working with plaster is that when you buy a plaster kit, it can break with, during the shipment when it comes to you. And that's exactly what happened to my kit. What I'm pointing at right now is the wall of this particular building and this piece broke in two. Repairing plaster is not very hard. All you have to do is use ordinary wood glue and that should um, repair this quite well. I want to talk to you about a fit issue for this plaster kit. When the manufacturer made this plaster kit, um, they didn't do it perfectly. This bottom portion of the building is supposed to fit flush in this groove for the base. And as you, and as you can well see, it doesn't do that. It just sits right on top. In order for me to remedy the problem, I want to have to sand it down. What I have in my hand, on my right hand, is a sandpaper, an ordinary sandpaper. And I'm going to sand this smooth area of the plaster in order, to, in order for me to make it fit. Okay, so I just finished sanding. Let's go see if it fits. Perfect. It's time for me to paint my model. I already gave the entire model a coat of black primer and now it's time for me to use my airbrush and paint the entire model with the main color. I'm going to give the building and the base a wash. What you see right here is a cup of brown artist oil paint mixed with mineral spirits. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the entire building and the, um, the street a wash. I'm going to give some dust effects. I'm going to tint the entire model with a coat of buff color mixed with a little bit of white.
I want to talk to you more about the wooden base I'm using for the diorama. This particular wooden base is something that I bought at my local craft store. And as you can well see, the original finish was this, um, there was no finish actually. There was this, this is bare wood right here in this particular um, color. So what I've done was I use this product called um, Poly Shades made by Minwax. It's a stain and polyurethane all in one and I gave it two coats and it really made this uh, base look very handsome. Okay, so we built the two model kits, we painted both of them, and for one of them we actually weathered it, and the other one we just we painted it to make it look nice. And so now we put them together onto a base, and I'm going to show you what I think about the entire project from the start to the end. Take a look. This is the completed model figure and the diorama after painting and weathering everything and I think I did a good job. One of the best things that I like about this diorama is of course is the figure that I painted and assembled. This is a very nice representation of a anime figure um, that I have ever done really. Um, the skin tone is beautiful. The glazing that I've done on the skin does look realistic and the facial expression on this on this girl she just looks very realistic to me um, of course this is anime which basically means that it does have a, a little bit of a cartoonish look to it because of its eyes but it's intended to be that way um, this figure when I bought it like I said earlier is a anime figure it's not supposed to be an extreme realistic figure more of an artistic um, anime figure in Japan because this is a Japanese figure but at the same time this is a very sexy looking uh, anime figure and it just looks real beautiful to me really I just think that this is a very sexy looking figure with her um, micro mini skirt um, legs wearing her stockings and tall boots even her back looks very sexy as well it's just a very very um, stylized sexy looking girl and she is quite beautiful really I did I think I did a really good job in making her look gorgeous okay so that completes this model project there's one thing I want to share with you about doing this particular kit. As I was searching on the internet for this uh, for a model kit, and oh, one moment, please. Oh, come on, come on! I know you want to be here. Okay, folks, this is my cat, and he wants to be here. He's been knocking around my camera that you're watching me through, so I'm just gonna have him, yeah, be here on the camera with with me. So anyway. Um, as I was, well, I'm trying to get my train of thought here, folks. Now, <laughs> oh God. now, as I was searching for the internet, uh, on the internet, looking for this uh, this particular figure, uh, for a figure to choose from, if there ever is a dark side of making model kits, I think I found it, because I was amazed. At so many girl figures that are for sale on the internet that is so pornographic I had saw like you know figures of girls in various poses that you would normally would see um, on, a, on a dirty magazine or something you would see um, on one of those porn sites on the internet it was really really um, degrading really so if there ever is a dark side model kit building, I think I found it. But before I go, um, really, 
I, I just want to say that what I've been doing uh, by painting this model, this model figure is only one way of painting model figures. There are a lot of ways to paint model figures and you shouldn't really rely on just this video on how to do it. So I highly encourage you to um, look around the internet or buy books or uh, do, look for other resources as well, not this particular video, look at other videos and see which uh, technique that you would like to paint your figures. Because there are many ways to paint figures and you should really choose one that you like, that you enjoy. So what you're about to see is a video slideshow and so uh, both me, QDC, and my cat wants to say goodbye. Um, go ahead, come on, tell him goodbye. Tell him goodbye. Yeah, man.